Overclocking Ryzen 3rd generation can be worth it or totally not worth it depending on who you ask. That's because these CPUs have built-in auto overclocking features that can boost the frequency on a single core or sometimes a few cores to levels that you just can't achieve with a manual all-core overclock. And that right there means manual all-core overclocking comes at the cost of single core performance, which forces users to make a really important choice. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some overclocked settings that I'm using on my Ryzen 9 3950X, and then we'll compare the performance to stock settings and also to an Intel 9900K. Let's get started. Quick disclaimer here, obviously overclocking comes with a little bit of risk. At the very least, you're probably gonna void your warranty, and I guess worst case scenario, you could damage or fry your CPU. Having said that, I've been overclocking for like 10 or 12 years, and I've never experienced a single total hardware failure. Nevertheless, You've been warned. Before I start overclocking, I always just like to double check that I'm running the latest version of my system BIOS, just because I wanna make sure that I'm taking advantage of any new features or patches or fixes that might help improve stability. To get started, I like to make sure that my memory is running at its rated speeds and timings. The RAM that I'm using here is G-Scale Trident Z Neo, which supports AMD DOCP profile, which is the same thing as Intel XMP profile. So to get everything configured, all you need to do is select DOCP from the drop-down menu, and that should automatically detect all of the settings for your RAM. You can see here I'm running 3600 megahertz at C16, and down here at memory frequency, it just confirms that and says that I'm running DDR4 at 3600 megahertz. Next, we need to set the speed of the Infinity Fabric, which is this setting right here called F-Clock. AMD tells us that your F-Clock should be set to a one-to-one -one ratio with your memory frequency. So since this memory is running at 3600 megahertz double data rate or DDR, that means its base frequency is 1800 megahertz. So from the drop down menu, I simply open that up, find 1800 megahertz and set that. And now I'm running at one to one. And just a quick note with Ryzen third gen, you can actually overclock the infinity fabric and go pretty high, but it's not really recommended because once you go beyond about 1800 megahertz, you don't actually have a one-to-one -one ratio anymore. And that can actually hurt performance in some cases. So my recommendation is to just stick around 1800 megahertz if you can. The CPU core ratio is where you're gonna set your frequency multiplier. I've boosted that up to 44 to give me an all core overclock of 4.4 gigahertz. And the way that works is really simple. You just take this number and multiply it by your base clock frequency, which is 100 in this case, unless you overclock that, which I actually don't recommend. Um, and the resulting frequency in this case is 4.4 gigahertz. And now that we have all that stuff out of the way, we can start looking at voltages, which are just down here. And there's really only one that you need to concern yourself with, with these Ryzen third gen CPUs, and it's the CPU V core. So I have mine set to manual so that I can dial in my own specific voltage, which in this case is 1.33750 volts. Why that number? Well, I actually already went through the process of finding the lowest possible V core value that will stabilize my 16 core CPU at 4.4 gigahertz. So if you're just starting out with a brand new overclock, you can go like 1.35 or 1.4 even if you have a good cooler, just make sure you're watching your temperatures. And then start with your frequency at like four gigahertz, let's say, and then keep bumping up your frequency until you find the point that it's no longer stable. At that point, drop it back down to the last known value that was stable. And then you can come back to your voltage and start dropping that in increments. If you started at 1.4, I'd go to like 1.375, 1.35 and so on and so forth until again, you find the point of instability and then revert back to the last voltage that was stable. And you should at that point have found the highest core frequency and the lowest voltage that will keep it stable. And that's exactly where you wanna be. At each step of the way, when you're overclocking, just make sure you're running like a CPU intensive task, um, a benchmark or a stress test even, just to flush out any instability issues that there may be. And always remember to monitor your temperatures while you're doing stuff like that. That's all you really need to do to configure an overclock with Ryzen third gen. You don't even really need to touch any of these other voltages down here. This one here, the DRAM voltage gets automatically configured when you set the DOCP like we did in the first step. But all these other voltages, you can actually just leave on auto. A lot of people have a problem with that or they had a problem with that, I should say, when Ryzen and X570 first launched, Ryzen 3rd Gen that is, where some of these voltages on some motherboards were just way too high and it was causing uh, concern actually, to be honest. But a lot of that seems to have been fixed now. If you're using a newer X570 board and as long as you're running the latest BIOS, you're probably going to be fine with auto. But if you do wanna jump in and go full manual, I will provide some links in the description to some really good articles that'll explain what these values should be and kind of tell you what each one does as well. So check those out if you're interested in really fine tuning all of these sub voltages as well. 
That's all that I'm gonna do to configure this particular overclock. It's pretty quick, simple, and easy. So I'm just gonna save the settings and then go ahead and boot into Windows. With these overclock settings, the CPU is idling at about 37 to 38 degrees Celsius with an ambient room temperature of about 24 degrees Celsius. And that's using a Cooler Master 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler with the fan set to about 20%. In Blender, the all-core overclock increased performance, which actually means a decrease in the render time by around 10%. The 9900K doesn't even come close to the stock or overclocked 3950X. The multi-core score in Cinebench R15 saw about a 10% boost with the overclock settings, but the single core count actually went down a little bit, and that's because stock settings allow a single core to hit frequencies as high as 4.7 gigahertz, which in this case is about 300 megahertz faster than our overclocked settings. Looking only at multi-core performance in Cinebench R20, the overclocked 3950X performs about 10% faster, which is a similar result to what we're seeing with Cinebench R15 and Blender. 3D Mark Time Spy really didn't benefit much from the overclock. Definitely not as much as the other tests so far. We're seeing an overall increase of just a few percent. Overwatch is a title that can take advantage of multi-core CPUs, at least to some extent, and running 4.4 gigahertz across all cores boosted the frame rates by a few percent. The overclocked 3950X still lags behind the 9900K, but not by a significant margin. In Rocket League, the frame rate is capped at 250 frames per second, and any one of these CPUs can pretty much max that out. What's interesting though, is that the 9900K is actually the worst performer, or the slowest, in this particular test. With Quake Champions, the frame rate actually decreased with the overclock. I ran the test several times just to make sure I wasn't getting a false result, and I actually kept getting the same numbers, suggesting that this game really likes high clock speeds on fewer cores, rather than a lower overall all-core overclock. And I grabbed this screenshot of hardware monitor after playing for a while with stock settings and saw that five of the cores had actually hit 4516 megahertz, which I guess explains this result. Rise of the Tomb Raider displayed very similar results to Quake Champions where the all-core overclock seemed to perform worse than the stock settings. And finally, we have the temperatures of the 3950X at stock and 4.4 gigahertz measured during all of the testing that we just looked at. The heavily multi-threaded tasks added a huge amount of heat to the CPU package, but the gaming results don't really show much of an increase. And the OC temperatures actually decreased in Quake Champions and stayed the same in Rise of the Tomb Raider. These are the two titles that didn't seem to take advantage of the OC, and I guess that's reflected here, where at stock settings, the CPU actually produced a little bit more heat, or in the case of Rise of the Tomb Raider, the same amount. So what do you think? Is overclocking Ryzen 3rd Gen going to be worth it for you? I actually think that's a question that's going to be pretty tough to answer for a lot of people because... Well, a lot of people do a lot of different things with their computers. Uh, oftentimes it's a mix of multi-core and single or low core count computing. The good news here is that temperatures are actually pretty well controlled even while overclocking. And keep in mind that I'm using a Ryzen 9 3950X, which is an absolute beast of a CPU. It's got 16 cores and 32 threads, and still overclocking all the way to 4.4 gigahertz on all those cores is no problem at all for a basic AIO from Cooler Master. In this case, it's a 360 millimeter. I believe it's the ML360R. If you want to check that one out, it does a pretty good job. So I guess it goes without saying that six, eight or 12 core Ryzen third gen CPU should be probably even easier to cool. You shouldn't need any crazy exotic cooling, a decent AIO or a high end air cooler for that matter. And you should be just fine. All right, guys, there's gonna be some links down below with all of the hardware that you saw featured in this video. Make sure you check those out if you're interested and leave a comment and talk about the results of your Ryzen third gen overclocking experience. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. See ya.